Oh no, I bought another trailer. So it's this little black one. You can see two other trailers there. And over there next to my propane tank, there is another one. So let's talk about this. So the reason I bought this is so that I can tow it behind my Polaris Ranger and load things in it that I need to take up to the shop, which is about 200 yards behind me, but primarily to use for doing yard cleanup. You can see over there next to the propane tank, I have a big old pile of pine needles. Granted, I'll have to put something down in the bed of the trailer so that the pine needles don't get all intertwined in the the mesh but this is a carry-on brand it's a 5x8 I was actually looking for a 4x8 and the person I bought this from had this one listed as a 4x8 but as soon as I saw it I knew it was a 5x8 but anyway 5x8 will totally be fine for my needs he bought it at Lowe's Hardware Lowe's doesn't sell the 4x8 version of this trailer they only sell 5x8 they also sell a 5x8 with a wood deck and they sell a 4x6 that looks identical to this, just smaller. And then they also sell a 3x4, I think. I don't know. It's really small. It has taller sides, but then the sides are enclosed with this expanded mesh style steel. So right now, you can see the tailgate. It's laid down flat in the bed. It's got some little latches that'll hold it in the vertical position. And that doubles as a ramp gate too. So this trailer, another thing that I could use it for is to haul one of my dual sport motorcycles behind my Subaru Crosstrek. I could also use it to tow a motorcycle behind my Chevy Colorado. The big black trailer over there, the enclosed 7x12, that's my primary motorcycle hauler. But I use that for weekend trips. This would be good for a day trip. Just load up the bike, throw my gear bag in the back of the car or in the back of my little Chevy Colorado and uh, go that route. So one of the things that sets this apart from the ones that I have looked at at Lowe's Hardware is these little three quarter inch round marker lights that are grommet mounted. Every time I've looked at these trailers at Lowe's, they have a big cube style surface mount light that protrudes from the side of the trailer about an inch or so and almost all of them get broken off whether it's vandals coming in and kicking them or smashing them or the Lowe's employees moving the trailers around and banging the trailers into each other as they move them around and getting broken I don't know this one has uh, 12 inch wheels so that's gonna be nice you don't have those little 8 inch donut wheels that are spinning super fast because they're so small. If we look at the back of the trailer, you can see that the tailgate is actually bolted on, or I keep calling it a tailgate, but I guess you could consider it that, but it's also the ramp. So that can easily be removed. So pulling that tailgate off would work really good for how I would use this for hauling lawn debris, tree branches, and all that kind of nonsense around my property. Just make things a whole lot easier to unload. So the ramp gate secures in place with these little latches. That's in a locked open position there. And that pin goes into this little notch right there. Another thing we can see is it's got some little loop, tie down loops. We have one on each side at the back and then we have one on each side at the front. So these side rails and the front rail, they are bolted to the trailer. So right here you can see the front rail is bolted to the side rails right right there with a Torx head bit or Torx head bolt. And then behind each of these pieces of angle iron on the inside we also have two bolts. So here we can see them right there, two at each point. So as many times as I've looked at these trailers at Lowe's over the last two years, I never even noticed that. A couple of small things that I'll do to this trailer before I start using it too much is put some split loom around those wires so they don't chafe and rub against the this bottom piece of tubing that they go through. I will probably disconnect that bolt that holds the three ground wires in place. We do not need lights wired to 
the chassis ground of the trailer so long as these tail lights are not picking up ground through chassis ground but you know I highly suspect that they are yep they are and because we only see two wires that means I do need to leave those two or three ground wires connected to chassis ground of the trailer otherwise the tail lights won't work I absolutely despise the fact that trailer manufacturers rely on chassis ground for grounding lights but of course in this case because that's what this light is manufactured for is picking up ground through chassis ground you don't have a whole lot of choice most all LED lights do not rely on chassis ground it's very possible that I might just ditch those cheap incandescent lights and switch them out to some sort of an LED tail light I just need to find out online and do some research and see if I can find a box style tail light that's LED this trailer is only about three months old it was manufactured in May of 2023 it's now October and then the previous owner he bought it in July it's kind of silly that he didn't take one of these lug nuts off and get rid of this little plastic tab that has the torque specs for the wheel. I will probably repack the wheel bearings primarily to get rid of the leaky seal. You can see it's puke and grease all over the place back there. This one over here on the other side isn't quite as bad. This is a Dexter axle, which is a good thing. I think it's a 2,000 pound axle. Each of the leaf springs has two leaves in it. Pretty light duty. Not a terribly expensive trailer, but it will do exactly what I want it to do. And it will do it very well. I wanted a relatively lightweight trailer to tow behind my Polaris Ranger. But when I buy something, I always try to get something that will serve multiple purposes. So that's why I did not want the 4x6 trailer because the 4x6 would be just a little bit too short to haul a motorcycle in. It would work, but the back tire of the motorcycle, at least the dual sport bikes that I have, the back tire would be sitting right at the very edge of the, the back. So that's why I wanted an eight foot. But then I say multi-purpose, well, why don't I just use one of these other trailers? Well, they're too heavy for what I need to do with the Polaris Ranger that I have. So, hope you've enjoyed the little video on this little cool trailer. Um, I might be doing some small upgrades to it, and when I do, I will post some more videos. So be sure to like this video, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.